Hello and welcome to our 143rd anniversary service at Knox Floss. We welcome you here on behalf of the Kirk Session. So here I am. I've never preached a second anniversary service in a row in any church in all my life. And I'm doing it here near Crossman. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to walk with you these last year and a bit. I uh, value the friendships that we've instigated and I'm hoping and praying that we will all be back to worship here in the flesh very soon. So let us worship God together after this one announcement. It says, Reg, and Ancon will be celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary on Saturday, June the 12th. So that's the wedding anniversary, the 50th wedding anniversary, Saturday, June the 12th. And if you would like to join Red and Ann for this celebration, you are invited to a drive-by of their daughter's residence. And the drive-by will be between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock on June the 12th. And the address, 1817 Little Ninth Road, Elmville. Again, 1817 Little Ninth Road, Elmville. Best wishes only, please, and much love to the Counts. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sat, sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. Even before a word is on my tongue. Lord, you know it completely. It is too wonderful to me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Let us worship God. Founders, its ministers, 
It's successful generations of believers. God, we thank you for our past and the strength it gave us to come through these last many months of COVID-19. We thank you for the perseverance taught and ask that you lead and guide us into the future. Help us to learn from everything that has been so that we may make the best of what is and work wisely towards what will be. Merciful God, we thank you that you keep on calling us to new ways of working towards your kingdom. Forgive us when we are sometimes slow or unwilling to respond. We do not always understand what you are asking of us. We run from when and what we would rather not do. We prefer our way to yours. Gracious God, renew you our spirits, strengthen our wills, send us out forgiven and restored. Be with us now and lead us forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And some words of forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy over many, many decades, you have pardoned what we have been, repaired what we are, and will shape what we will be. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
could not see was lying down in his room. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. When the Lord called Samuel, Samuel and called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know yet. The Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear to Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Then the ark of God captured. In those days, the Philippines, Philistines mustered for war against Israel, and Israel went out to battle against them. They encamped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Apa. The second reading is Psalm 81, God's appeal to stubborn Israel. To the leader, according to Gith of Asra, sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Rise a song, rise. Raise a song and sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our festival day. For it is statue for Israel and an ordinance of God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a voice I have not known. I revealed your shoulder of the burden, your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Merah, Shelah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you, O Israel, if you would not listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down for, to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, you brought you, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. The next reading is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 5 to 12. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, Let light shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are affected, affected in every way, but not crushed, prefects, but not driven to desire, despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in your, our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The next reading is Mark 2, 23 to 28. Pronounced about the Sabbath. One Sabbath he, he was going through the cornfields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing that, what is not lawful, on the Sabbath? And he said to them, 
Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abigail was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seems to be an odd ministry, doesn't it? The boy Samuel serving old Eli in the temple, a child, with the word of the Lord grown silent. It seems a bit like Ontario this past year. 
Things did go along okay, though, didn't they? As indeed they have a habit of doing. Even as the sanctuary was silent for a time from encounters with the Word of God, yet our activities have continued in other different ways. So much like the temple where Samuel and Eli ministered, their activities continued also. Their temple was the site of the Ark of the Covenant. So certain things just had to be done, even if there was no word. Pilgrimages were still made there by the faithful. Animals were sacrificed, rituals performed, liturgy followed, psalms sung. All of this so that the sacred place of worship would still stand, would still be seen as a place of a silent God. And the silence at Shiloh was not due to a pandemic. Our story says the reason for the silence was right there in the temple. Eli's two sons had violated God's laws. They had done evil in God's sight. So the purity of the word of the Lord was a judgment, an indicator of the wrath of a righteous God. What's changed 3,000 years later? Does this story fit our present world circumstances? Doesn't it seem familiar? People have gradually become aware that God's word has become rare. Some say it's just not available. Some say that the problem is God. More and more people are thinking, will this pandemic bring about the death of God? Most people don't miss the word at all. After all, our own words can be used easily enough. Me, I'm experiencing more of the difficulties with this. Our own words losing some vitality. Some days I feel a lack of vitality all around me. How's your reading of articles in our Presbyterian church literature? Or have you been on the website recently? Our traditions and scripture bases are fading. Communication is now steeped in day-to-day -day jargon. Church leaders use important secular words such as cutting edge, funding opportunities, free online resources when they can. So it's clear that the word of the Lord is rare these days. Traditional words are going or gone. Commercials either on TV or on your mobile device can bring some comfort. Our words are being used to sell soft drinks, cars, medications. There's a car called the Key of Soul. The app says it brings moments of inspiration and gives hope for the future. On the other hand, church leaders have begun to sound like our local MPP or MP. Bay Street, like Billy Graham. So what's the people's response to the word drought around us? Repentance, lamentation, reformation, <laughs> not likely from where I stand. I see religion becoming nostalgic. Check your TV channels on Sunday. They're full of old time preachers offering their version of the good old days in living color nonetheless. Could it be a Disney World version? old-time religion. It's lovely, beautiful, even. It's 
sounds so inviting. It's almost the real thing. In our word, we'll do the haunting words of Scripture, cut through the babbling, bubbling fable. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. The story continues showing the barrenness of the relationship between Israel and her God. Scripture says there was no frequent vision. God wasn't here, and he wasn't seen either. Israel's God's absence was absolute a child. Barnabas was there. Together with Eli, the chief priest, and Ned Nix, the Holy of Holies, his eyesight was almost gone. He couldn't see. He had no vision. It was night. Yet God's lamp had burned all night without going out. It's silent, it was just before dawn. It was still dark, though. As dark as Eli's vision. As dark as God's absence. A word comes. Just a word. Sam. Sam. God called Samuel to be a prophet and leader of Israel. And Samuel expects only Eli's voice, though he misunderstands his call. And Samuel is called three times. It's like being called for chores or supper by a parent. You're called until you answer. God's call is urgent. God's call is always personal. And Eli finally takes charge. He tells Samuel to lie down again and to answer this time, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. As is Samuel, who is called as Samuel, who needs to answer. He needs to say yes. To a future that has the promise of who you personally are meant to be. The choice is necessary. The pandemic is almost over in Ontario. We need to claim God's call for ourselves or simply reject it. The new sound system helps us hear the voices much clearer. But when we think about all the things we could be doing this fall, the family we've missed so much, the kids, the grandkids, that can be happy and enjoyed after so long. We belong to a church denomination divided over sexuality issues. There's more and more empty pews all around. Is God calling you and me to ministry? To care for his people and for our neighbor? The call of the Lord is like that. You and me can wrestle with it. We can try to close our ears or be like Samuel who said, Speak, Lord. For your servant hears you. God's call is insistent. God's call is totally and absolutely personal. Your age is not a factor as to when you hear it. How will you respond as our branch of Christ Church stirs before gathering together? Promote, serve, and enjoy fellowship also.
Let's never forget it needs to be vision. Infrequent still to vision must come to an end. Samuel was confronted by the presence of the Holy One of Israel. Dawn came to Samuel. Dawn came to Israel. Dawn comes to us also. Church buildings will open again. All across Ontario and Canada, people, God's people, will trickle in again. Minister, elders, board, organist, congregation. The table will be set again right here. Christmas and Easter candles will be lit. The sanctuary will come alive again with God's people and the light of a new day. Music will be heard, singing. The word of the Lord will be heard. Through God's grace, it will be renewed. The dawn's almost here. Thanks be to God.
very much needed reconciliation to our country. Care for each of us through this time of much needed change and reconciliation. We pray for those in our community who are searching for peace in their lives. For those burdened by anxiety about themselves or a loved one, facing difficulties to which they can see no solution, so much so that they are being torn by emotional and psychological pressure. We pray for those facing change and upheaval at this time, when so many are faced by upheaval. To all those around us, grant your calm, tranquility, quietness, and peace. We pray particularly today for Dylan Marhoney, John McElwain, Evelyn Minty, Claude Ricard, Tom Tucker, Marlon Cole, Wally, and Myrtle Greenlock, Lois Lyons, Herb, June, and Jackie Ritchie, Lillian, and Claire Robinson. Loving God be with us as we gather to celebrate another year in our life together. Help us appreciate all you have done. Trust in all you will do. Recognize all that you are doing here and now. God, you have blessed us greatly. Again, our thanks and our gratitude. We join together in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
continue to surprise us. Love continue to astonish us. And faith continue to nurture us. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go with us as we leave this time that we have spent together.